Folks, how are we doing? Welcome to Good Works Tractors. We have a familiar face here today. Justin with 511 is here installing something that we showed you a prototype of, I don't know, six months ago, something like that, Man. a while ago. And now it is in production, huh? Correct. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Well, one of a kind to the market, a foot controlled electric free. Correct. Yep. Third function. Pretty darn unique. So we're going to show you that installation throughout this video too, but the standard L series, a super popular series of tractor, one of the most popular that's on the market today. It's a great value, great value machine that's out there. There's a lot of other customized features on this machine that are available from 511. So I want to show you those two, but he does sell stuff, not just for Kubota. That's what we're talking about today, but he's got products for John Deere, for Coyote, any others? Not current. Not yet. That's a, that's a familiar theme though. Who else sells John Deere, Kubota and Coyote stuff? Okay. There's somebody else. It's right on the tip of tip. Oh, me. Yeah, that's what I sell too. John Deere, Kubota, and Coyote tractors. So great minds think alike. All right, Justin. So let's start with this third function. Give us a little background on it. Show us the highlights here, how it works, all that kind of stuff. Okay. So when I wanted to buy a third function for this tractor, all I saw commercially available were the electric powered ones that are powered by solenoids and uh, whatnot. And I really just didn't want electrical in the system. Um, I wanted to be able to control the speed, not have to worry about solenoids and wiring and things going bad down the road. So I started, my immediate need was for my snow plow to angle the blade back and forth. And I started that by building a system that's manually controlled under this loader valve, and then decided to take it further and install it as a foot operated third function. So. You didn't have to take your hand off anything to operate it. Uh, so some of the features of it are one, like I mentioned, nothing to wire in when you're installing the system. So therefore nothing to go wrong with electrical components or anything like that. And the third thing is just having that control, whether you want to go slow or fast, it's all controlled by your foot. So you can kind of feather your grapple or whatever, snow plow. I know when I'm plowing, I don't like slamming the blade back and forth. So I have that kind of control with this. Um, and you can put restrictors in line with the other type third functions, but then you're stuck with that slow speed. So this gives you complete control over the speed of your function or your attachment that you're using. That's pretty sweet. Now that's a different pedal design than the prototype, isn't it? Yeah, I've, I, and that's part of the reason this has taken six months or more from our initial video. I mean, this has been in process for a couple of years, just perfecting it. and. I've gone through, I think, three or four different pedal designs until I settled on this and felt that this was the most comfortable to operate. It looks great, it looks amazing. I mean, and I see there's some different holes there. Is it, it's adjustable then to? Yeah, so okay. you can move the pedal itself and the valve to a couple different positions. Okay. You can also move the entire valve itself on the loader tube this way, as well as rotate on the loader tube. Okay. And then you can also move the valve on our mount system forward or backward uh, looks like about two inches uh, total travel there so i so, find it most comfortable tilted back all the way yeah and having the valve down and kind of in that's nice though just more adjustment for individual operators and, and right. everything else cool okay so if i'm looking at this it starts on this side is this kind of the start starting point over here on the installation yep well, you start with installing this valve oh, on okay. the loader, okay. loader mount there. But the hydraulics all feed off of this side over here? Yeah, so uh, right up typically they'd be over on that side with the solenoid-powered ones because it's pulling from the loader valve yeah. and then feeding back to the, the three-point. But having it fo foot operated over here, I feed it to the left side and then the, the okay. outlet lines come out. Okay, on, so you, you kind of start over here, feed it that way, and then run our correct run our hoses. And I see quick disconnects. You got those. So if you do want to take your loader off, you have yep. quick disconnects right up here. So that's nice. So that's thought out. And then of course you just have. And are the hoses included? Yeah, everything's included. The only thing I don't include is some uh, pipe dope. Oh, okay. Or thread sealant. Okay. Um, and HST fluid. If you sure. Yeah. Once you're done, you want to check the fluid and maybe top it off. Um, but everything's included and it's actually sub-assembled to a, as much as it can be. Like this whole assembly from these couplers to, to these couplers are all going to come assembled. So it's a matter of a bolt here, a bolt there, and you're done with that assembly. And the valve's installed onto the mount and so on. Nice. So, But that, even 
what about is this a bracket that you supply in this bracket down here well that one's yes. got 511 right on it yep so from here to here is all one sub assembly sweet with the couplers everything installed each line is labeled what it's connecting to and what it's going to and there's an arrow so if the, the label's here the arrow facing this way saying outlet one or whatever outlet wow. two so there's no mixing up and it's it's more intended for installation. These labels should last quite a while, but yeah, it's more to ease the installation. Well, once it's on there, though, I mean, you don't, you know, unless you're right. going to take the whole thing back apart. Yeah, yeah. Correct. Yeah. That looks really good. That's really well thought out. It looks OEM. Maybe better oh, than OEM you. with all these instructions on there, too. Yeah, you know? thank you. Man. And one thing as well is, you know, I thought about having a male and female here, so you can't mix oh, them. Yeah. But my thought process here is you're not going to have a stick come and push your coupler and get your line disconnected. Yep. Not that that, I mean, you see yep. loaders disconnect all their quick attaches. So yep. I did it that way. And if you're operating the foot pedal and say your grapple is going the opposite way that you want it to be with your, your foot action, you can swap, swap these yep. or swap down here your attachment ends or whatever. Is there something that identifies like line one on both sides here and line two or? Yeah, yeah. on the line itself. Okay. So it says like working port two, working port one, and then okay. lower coupler, lower coupler, upper, upper coupler. So yeah, everything's identified, but I mean, this is just going to reverse it if sure. it's, yep. that's the worst thing that can happen. Really nice. So I know you made this product because it's something that you wanted, but I mean, when you're envisioning other folks wanting this, who are you kind of targeting? Who do you, who do you think is going to want to use this? So I'm targeting people that don't want to mess with electrical. Okay. be it installation or problems down the road yeah um and also kind of do-it-yourselfers that you know they might not build this on their own but it's a simple kit you know you can install it in an hour or so uh, you don't have to schedule it with your dealer yep. you don't have to wait for components i do currently have these on pre-order because i'm trying to understand what i need to keep in inventory but yep. um and the the just the level of control of it you know it's just a smooth operating system that's not like a light switch on and off. And it's just very simple. I mean, you could have a hose burst or maybe the valve will malfunction down the road, but those are really the only two things that could ever happen, which would be the same thing on any other valve or hose on your machine. So it's, it's almost like it's, it's more simple, but more advanced. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Crazy to say, but it seems like it. And I, you know, I've seen a lot of, uh, things online where people post their switches went out or their solenoids went out, you know, and another good thing is if you want to run this for longer periods, it's probably not good on a solenoid powered one to just hold the button endlessly sure. where this, you should be able to hold the, the foot pedal down, flow oil, basically nonstop. And, That's a good we are proud to be sponsored by RimGuard Solutions, a liquid ballast weight. It goes right inside your tires, completely hidden. Not only is it gonna help with safety, keeping those rear tires planted on the ground, it helps with loader efficiency and traction too. The benefits of RimGuard include being the heaviest all natural liquid ballast weight on the market. It's not gonna corrode your rims like the old calcium chloride. It's not gonna freeze and it's available at over a thousand dealers nationwide. Find the dealer near you at RimGuardSolutions.com. All right, so we have a few other things to show you. Now we have the original. Now this guard, I think, was on the machine last time we saw you, right? Yep. And, and that was you... that was actually the guard that the first guard I ever designed for my own personal tractor, which huh. kind of launched this business. So. Wow. But now we're gonna, we're just going to throw this one away. Well, I'm not throwing it away, but just continuous improvement, trying to make things better based yeah. on customer feedback and things like that. And this is a new design right here. Correct. Yep. Okay. So tell us more about this. So the original one was a, a single piece design. And I've had quite a few customers ask for more coverage down below, as well as a place to put a chain or other items they may want to store. Oh, check this out. Yeah, get a look down there, Chris. That's that's a sweet design right there. That's You know how hard it is to find storage on tractors. Now you have a little tray. Perfect. It's got the holes in there, so you're not going to like, if you put chains in there, it's not just going to turn into a rust pile right. in water. And it also provides more coverage for the grill itself because things can come up from underneath, you know, behind the front of the grill guard and, and go up there. So yeah. uh, kind of dual purpose. And that bottom portion, this is actually three piece. The bottom portion is actually seven gauge. So a lot heavier steel Dang. compared to all of our grill or most of our grill guards that are 11 gauge. Okay. Some of our larger guards like the Coyote RX and 
NX, NS, those were actually making out of uh, seven gauge. Oh, wow. So wow. 50% thicker, they're they weigh like 35 pounds. But Dang. for most of the grill guards, it's 11 gauge. And then the skid plates or the the uh, third piece under, near, under there is uh, seven gauge. Cool. So you have this piece up top and you have this separate section right here too? Yeah, so, okay. and this is this lower section now, you know, there was a small gap along the bottom with the previous design. Yep. Now this fully encapsulates this lower fixed portion of the guard it. and it's supported by there. So it's mounted at the, the pivot points there, wraps under, and then it's secured to that seven gauge plate, which is also secured back where it, it, the whole frame mounts to the, fr the frame of the tractor. So very robust, basically no areas where anything can get through there. Yeah. Yeah, that's sweet. So I, I don't, I remember this from last time and, and there's a lot of new folks that are watching our channel all the time. Justin brought over this tool uh, just to show us what he, what he does, but he can take this little scanner magical tool to like a dealer lot where there's tractors and like scan. He can scan the machine and get, it's all just perfect then. So he can then put it in the computer and it's going to spit out all this information. So it's a, it's a precise exact fit. I mean, it's, it's pretty fancy stuff. I don't know how to do this stuff, but Justin does, and it's amazing. So that's how you're seeing such a perfect fit here. I mean, he's, he's paying extra to do things the right way and get it done. I just, I wanted to interject because that just popped into my head. And that, that is something that not only for better fit, but um, getting it right the first time, or hopefully the first time. Yeah. Before I take measurements, angles, all this, get a prototype made, find something isn't fitting right, go back. And it'd sometimes be three, four, five times yeah. before I'd get the final product where when I start using that 3D scanner, a lot of times it's from the first prototype, it's ready for production. So, um, but one thing I, so this one, this is my prototype. I'm making one change and the only change that is, is a, an improvement that, so there's a very small gap here, much smaller than any of the holes or anything, but just my personality, the way I am, I'm maybe overkill. I'm actually adding another flange back here that goes upwards, so it will come up oh, wow. and wrap okay. behind. Yeah. So that's the only change I've made to this design. That way, and, if there's a stick that fits through that seam, it blocks. Yeah, it and it, you know, it's yeah. it's really a, a small gap, but um, right. another thing I wanted to mention in terms of customer requests or customer feedback, there's often a question of how much light does this block? Yeah, um, good question. Yeah. Which, when I'm running something, I have my overhead lights on, yep. I turn the headlights off. Um, yep. With a bucket or whatever, they don't really work well, the headlights. So, based on that feedback, this has been made much bigger. So, the okay. overall opening of the headlights is just kind of wide open and more substantial. I mean, I found though, like, if you're using your loader and you got the bucket on or a grapple on or a snow pusher or something else, you're a good majority of that light's being blocked by the tool that's up front and it comes from the stuff that's mounted up on the rops or you know a lot of john deere's had the fender right. mounted lights and all that kind of thing too so that's where you get more of your light output anyways the headlights are historically not very useful yeah and they, you actually get a lot of reflection off the bucket yes. or whatever yep right back at from you. the headlights yep. so yep. yep cool now you don't have them on here right now but side guards are a thing aren't they for most of your models now yep several models are compatible with our with our side guards and these this is actually designed to work with our existing side guards now okay. in terms of the mounting locations so if you want to go all out which is what we did on my Kubota m4 last year i think it was the side guards basically they're just as robust as this swing back on both sides so you know you know you can you can see the standard is yeah i can see how things could swoop right through here to side swipe so you just get coverage back i don't know a foot maybe a little uh, seven, they're about 16 17 oh, inches deep okay good yeah. good yeah so anyway if you want to go all out you can get those wings too okay so we got the grill guards covered it's kind of your your meat and potatoes what you started out with but you have other things you've done i'm staring at a couple right here i think there's a couple more on the back important if you're trailering tractors you have tie down points right yep Okay, how have those been selling for you? Good customer feedback on those? Yeah, really well. You know, this is something that I hear, I don't know how many times, I don't know why tie-down points don't come on tractors yeah. from the factory. Tell me but, about it. Um, 
three eight. Just a couple of bolts. Uh, yeah, they they use the exist. Well, actually, I send replacement bolts, but same okay. bolt locations that this grill guard attaches with. Okay. Um, I just send longer bolts in this um, in this design. Uh, other ones, I send bolts that attach to the side of the frame. And okay. Some of the smaller models. Okay. Hardware is included. Hardware is included. Yes. Yeah. All right. So those are the front, and then you got a, another matching set for the back, right? Yeah. And looks like these have. Are these existing holes that are on these? Uh... Yeah, those utilize. Oh, that's crazy. So if you have a uh, back hole, okay, you can't run these. Okay. Um, so it's us utilizing the back hole mounting points of the uh, ROPS. Yeah. Or axle. Oh, sweet area. Um, I mean, you, and you want to get these as pairs, right? You don't want to buy like one for the front, right? And one for the back. Get get all four of them. Get them on the front and the back. That way you have four anchor points. We've talked about that in videos before, but you just want yep. to make sure you're doing it the right way. So these things are stout, man. What do these little brackets weigh? Uh, the shipping weight on those with the hardware is about seven pounds, I believe. Yeah. They're three eighths steel. Yeah, that's some that's some chunky steel there. Okay. And uh, and that's something on the front. You know, I I like having individual points, like you said, four point. Yeah. I see a lot of times people just have a loop and then they loop a chain through it but that does nothing really to isolate the tractor yep. from yep. shifting right to left so I agree. that's why we came up with these okay i'm gonna hop up on here you mind if i hop up on here no no all right <sighs> got that that light bar right there okay how do i turn that thing on turn the key on a little bit yep the switch i actually don't have a permanent spot but it's this switch oh. right here oh sweet yeah there we go. Yeah, that's shining some real light. Here, let me turn those headlights on. Are the headlights on? That's your turn signal. Oh, it's, there there you go. go. There we go. Oh, you got LED bulbs in there, huh? Yeah. But that's nothing. That's where you get the real light. You see that, Chris? Yeah, I see it. There you go. That's the real light. That's what I'm talking about. That's a huge difference. Come back, look from this angle. So there's just your headlights. Yeah, you're getting some light blocks from that grill guard. But, boom, oh, way more light. Uh, you can turn those headlights off and there's almost, there's basically no difference out there. Very little. Now right. these, this light bar here, it, this is available for, this will pretty much fit, looks like it's really adjustable, huh? Yeah, well, I, it fits currently the 30, 2501, 3301, 3901. Okay. Um, I have been wanting to expand that to other models. Yeah. Basically, the only difference is the, the distance between the ROPs. Well, and then there's some difference in the tubing here, right? Some of it's square yeah, tubes, some are, different dimensions here, yeah. but that's that's no big deal. That's super nice. Gets that up out of the way. Now, well, can you still fit this in a, like a standard height garage, though, or no? Yeah, and that was the whole purpose of this. I couldn't okay. pull this tractor into my barn with the ROPs up. Okay. And I wanted light overhead, but most of the time... I'm just doing work on loading my truck and whatnot, yeah. and I don't want to put the wraps up every time, but I yeah. might want light. So yeah. that fits under my barn in a standard garage door, depending on where you adjust it. Do you um, include the light or is it just the-, the With or light? without, either okay. way. Okay, so you can get your own light if you want to or or get it with that light. Correct, yeah, that's set up for a 20 inch. That's How is it to wire it in? Is it pretty simple? It comes with the harness and everything. I ran this one directly to the ignition switch. Okay. Uh, there's a relay and everything tucked up under here all right but that way it's just on with the key and you can't leave it on oh and so the last thing justin kind of hiding underneath kubota did a good job designing that line cover on the top side and in general Kubota does a great job hiding their lines you guys can see how they're all tucked underneath here underneath the loader arms and kind of out of harm's way for the most part but there is one area that's left exposed which is the bottom side and kind of the bottom back side I guess I'd say right right that Justin came up with a solution for so you can get complete coverage you know you have it on the top side of this torque tube but on the bottom side and kind of the bottom back it was left exposed and so nice easy and we showed one of these installs on 
the 1025R. Or a, we showed it on a John Deere. Yeah, slightly different design. But yeah, but yeah. same kind of concept, just yep. to get that. I mean, this is where I see a lot of hydraulic line damages in this area. So um, simple to install. Was it a couple bolts? Yeah, you take out a bolt on each side, pop the cover on, replace the bolt using nice. the same same bolt. Yeah, super easy. And a, an easy upgrade, you know, I mean, again, you're you're dressing it up a bit, protecting it. You're probably saving money in the long run just by doing this instead of having to replace a section of bent line too. Right. So we have one more product to show you. Now this is for the the 60 series, the L60, like Correct. the L3560, L4060, L6060, all those kinds of models. Yeah, all, all the way up to 6060. Okay, new product again, innovation, always doing something new. Yeah, and this came directly from a customer request. Um, been something I've wanted to do for a while, but had a little more urgency when this customer called. He had a, uh, a small stump come up between his frame rails. And on those 60 series, they have that steering controller, which hydraulic lines and everything. Oh, um, okay. Broke a fitting off the steering controller. And he thought, well, I'll just go get a new fitting and rebuild it, do whatever, yeah, and come to find out you can't buy anything for the steering controller. It's a $1,700 price oh, approximately. the whole, the whole the kit whole or whatever? The whole controller. Wow. Um, wow. So oh, it actually wow. cost him, I think he said $2,400 with parts and labor. <laughs> um, so I thought this is probably something- Because of a stick that came up and hit it? Like a decent sized stump just came up wow. and broke. I mean, it's just a small hydraulic fitting that it broke off the steering controller. Holy and, cow. Huh. You look okay. at the Kubota parts list, and it's steering controller. It's not fitting or hose. It's That's crazy. one piece. So, so this protects that area. Yeah, so this goes all the way from the front of the brush guard um, all the way back to the axle pivot point. Hmm. Um, this is 7-gauge steel. Okay. And so this, like the L-series guard, yeah. This is under the front portion of the brush guard, so you can store something here. It cool. also protects things from coming up into the grill. Yep. And then this is the portion that uh, protects the steering controller. Wow. Now, the, the standard L-Series doesn't need this portion. It's a different design. Well, yeah, the standard L-Series has the pitman arm okay. and a whole different steering configuration. Okay. Um, so it would be kind of something completely different. It, yeah. it doesn't... It wouldn't be the same components you're protecting on that. Okay. Um, so you'll see here, these are slotted, and that is so that these can be used with or without our tie downs. Hmm. So with the tie downs installed, this will be shifted forward three eighths of an inch. Um, and uh, then- Makes sense. Uh, without the tie downs, it just shifts back. Yep. And so this is made, I have a couple different skid plates one's the 3560 and then this skid plate fits the 4060 through the 6060 okay but depending on the model uh determines which holes you use on this bracket which has got and which holes bolts. there that you need yep, oh, yep. so hardware is so included yep all the hardware is included so you start just put this up in the frame rail follow the instructions using the appropriate bolts and the appropriate holes in the bracket and then you put this up in front of the brush guard and there's two bolts that go into the bottom here. And then this piece goes around the front bar of the brush guard where you might hang weights from, locks in there, and then you put two bolts in here and it can't move up or down. The bolts are at the top location or the top of that bar. So you can't move up or down, in or out. Yeah, lock anything. in place. So another product are these side guards uh, for one series and two series John Deere 1023, 1025, 1026, as well as the 2025 uh, models. Um, wanted to introduce Ben. Ben has been a tremendous help in my business and doing a lot of the John Deere design. Uh, wouldn't be where I am today without his help. So very appreciative of that. So he's done most of the John Deere grill guard design, I believe. Um, but he did a, just an excellent job on these, these mount up using, and we've changed mounting locations on the one and two series over the last couple of years, um, just because of increased tab size for more strength and whatnot. So we had to accommodate for the, for that. So these guards will mount up to any one or two series 
that I mentioned before, if you've bought a, a front grill guard from us, these will mount without any additional drilling. So these holes will capture the existing mounting locations, as well as these here are for a U-bolt, which tie into the, the tubing that wraps around the hood near the headlights uh, for even more uh, robust uh, robustness or rigidity. And they just follow the lines perfectly on the on the bonnet on that tractor and just a really good solid design with these flanges in here just really makes it beefy and they look like they came from the factory so great job on the design and we're also doing now bundle kits so if you buy a front and a side guard or basically anything that you buy if your total is over six hundred dollars you get ten percent off of each product you add to the cart so these have been very popular for uh, orders with both the front and side guards and they just look really nice and offer a lot of protection. Uh, I guess the only thing, uh, other thing I'd like to say about this is we did use the 3D scan technology with this to start out. That's right. And that's how, that's how we were easily able to kind of capture the, the John Deere body lines and keep that OE look to it. Yeah, I think that was one of the first projects we did with a 3D scanner. Worked really well. Well, folks, that's a lot of stuff that we just covered there, and it's just great to see. I think you're doing amazing stuff. You're filling a void in the market. If you guys want to dress up your tractor, okay, you can make it look cooler, you can make it more functional, you can protect it, you can support a small business owner, just like me. So awesome stuff to see. You're only, what, an hour, hour and a half away, something like that? 99 miles. 99 Michigan. miles, yeah. Yep, for so me. another Michigander right here. So anyway, but shipping nationwide. Yep. Nationwide, we have gone to Puerto Rico as well, and a couple shipments to Australia. Wow. And it's free shipping to the lower 48. He's international, I guess is what he's trying to say. He's international, all right. So support him, 511designs.com, 5% off with code GWT as well. Thanks again for making the trip. It's nice to see you. Thanks for having me. Great to see you. And on that note, if you need something else for your tractor, well, we're standing inside my warehouse. We have all sorts of tractor attachments for the front end loader or the three point hitch. So go to goodworkstractors.com, see what we have to offer. If you have any questions on what you need, just shoot us an email, we're happy to help. I wanna thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by, and until next time, stay safe, we'll see you soon. Okay.